again, it's not that black is negative because it's associated with people of African ancestry. I keep telling people, it was, black was negative before it was applied. That's why those who wanted to oppress us used it, right? And even in, this, in Spanish, the term negro, they called Africans who they had enslaved or who were oppressed by them or, or suppressed, of all three of the, of the above, they called them negros. Right? They were saying, and at one time they also said piezas, which means pieces, like things. But the idea is, again, to say, you don't have personhood. I've made you into a thing. Now, if someone says, yeah, but what about the word white? White is not a nation either. No, but white in the English language was understood to be affirming of everything favorable. Right? So when people said white, that's why, in, uh, as you know, in the Moorish tradition, when uh, the prophet said white means purity, purity means God, and God means the ruler of the land. So when you see white in that context, and even in the, in the medieval period when the Templars because there is a Masonic element to part of this too, referred to living a good life as a pure and white life, which meant they were supposed to be honorable men, which meant they were supposed to respect life and live as Christ had instructed as far as we understood it. But that was the phrase, a pure and white life. So they're using a term for themselves that's meant to affirm and empower. Because like I said before, uh, in referencing, you know, Biko versus the judge, he said, you're more pink than white. So why do you call yourselves white? Well, because white is a lot more culturally affirming of our power, our divinity, our, our superiority than calling ourselves pink, right? And if we were to actually say to someone, you know, uh, Show me a black person. Show me some. So I've seen, because I've heard people say, I've seen people who are jet black. Yeah, I've seen people who are also very dark in hue as well. People say almost like a bluish or purplish tint. But the vast majority of, of people who you're calling black don't look like that. Just like the vast majority of people who you're calling white don't look like this paper. Right? So it's not about complexion. That's what's so disturbing. It's not about complexion. There's an area of, of um, science known as neurolinguistics. And in neurolinguistics addresses this issue of how language uh, affects the mind uh, or how we think. And this relates again to the research I was discussing earlier with Dr. Benaji, that words have power basically, and how we think is defined by our conception of certain words. That's why I said, you know, trying to make the word idiot favorable doesn't make a whole lot of sense when you can just call somebody by the existing words in that language or in another language, which means something good, genius. Um, for me, again, influenced by more science and influenced by what Prophet Noble Drali was conveying, I said, this just, that makes so much sense. Ask yourself why people who are Asian don't identify as yellow. Why are you so fixated on calling yourself by a color? And then if you tell me it's not a color, it's a political concept, political construct. Okay, so you gave me a political construct, but now I'm going to ask you, who are you? Where are you from? In other words, if, because I've heard people make the argument, it's a political construct. It means a reference to those of us who are pressed under the, the weight of global white supremacy. Okay, but now I was still going to ask you the same question. Who are you? Where do your people come from? What contributions have you made to the forward flow of civilization because I, I get the importance of recognizing there's a system of oppression 
I get that. But do you want to remain in the mindset always of being victimized so that you never move into the realm of, all right, but I have value and here's why I have value. Because people say, well, you know, I know we're descendants of kings and queens and I'll say the same thing. Um, name some. Uh, um, Martin Luther King. Uh, and since I'm trying to be funny and I'm, I'm saying, see, you naming kings and queens, you know, Queen Latifah. I mean, that's fine that we know these individuals who have obviously made contributions in their own right. But you know what I'm saying. You're telling me you're proud to be, quote unquote, black. I want to know what you're proud of. You're telling me you're comfortable with being black. I want to know what you're comfortable with. Tell me at length what your value is based upon your blackness. And even and if you start going to a discussion of legacies in African history, I'm going to return you back to the same point. So what you're saying is you're proud to be African. So say it. Why do you keep fixating on the color or the political construct? This idea of seeing the importance of a name, right? Names, words have power. The ancient comedic principle of nomo, the power of the spoken word. These are things that I also was exposed to in Africa-centered circles, which is why it was so odd for me that I had people trying to affirm black Ness or black, to me, like I said, there's something else going on. And so I say again, other folks are not calling themselves yellow Americans. There's no yellow power. There's no yellow consciousness. And those groups of people who are Asian of different nationalities, they have tended to do pretty well, even in the face of what we know as so-called global white supremacy. Right? And yes, I know that they know more about themselves, their culture's more intact, I agree. That's exactly why I'm telling you, figure out what your culture is so you can spread it and make it more uh, uh, influential within your community.